welcome to this new episode of NTB Dialogues, a special CNS series presenting insightful and thought-provoking interviews with leaders to end, to at least end or accelerate efforts to end TB. This series underpins the urgency to step up the fight against the epidemic. The latest global TB report shows that the world is not on track to meet all the NTB strategy targets and the NTB goal of ending it by 2030. New and fresh thinking is vital to reimagine every critical cog in the wheel to NTB, as well as to accelerate progress towards achieving Agenda 2030, which emphasizes upon leaving no one behind. Today's episode of NTB Dialogues features a special guest, Michael Miro, who is the Uganda representative for Dance Handicap for Bunt, and he's also a leader of Masaka Association of Persons with Disabilities Living with HIV and AIDS. Welcome, Michael, to our show today. Thank you. Michael, can you please share your personal experience and motivation to bring this very important issue to the forefront of discourse on TB control? Disability. Thank you, for, thank you very much, CNS, for hosting me. And I'm happy that um, whoever is online, you're most welcome. My name is Miro Michael, as David introduced me, and I'm a country representative for DHF, as well as a technical advisor on disability, gender based violence, and HIV AIDS to Massacre Association of Persons with Disability Living with HIV and AIDS. Um, what has to be clear is that myself, um, I'm not, I've never been affected by TB, neither am I HIV positive. However, um, I respect their rights and I see how they're suffering and uh, themselves haven't been able to speak out to let the world understand what they're going through. So I'm a patron and the founder of the organization, and currently I left it to be run and managed uh, by persons to build the way HIV positive. And then, um, as you when we in the conference in Netherlands, I saw that the issue to do with TB and disability is something that is not talked about, yet we have TB with children, TB with uh, people living on the street, or the homeless and everybody. So my question that I inspired me is, where are people with ability, one, do they get the information on TB? Or oh, how about those that acquired TB and then they got the effect, uh, the disability, maybe they lost their eyesight, they lost their hearing impairment. So these are the things that inspired me to come up and start uh, telling out the world that we shouldn't live persons with disability outside. Um, the campaign also, Leave No One Behind, Let the Conversation on Disability and TB Start, has been supported by TAG, and we're happy that uh, we've moved together to the short proposal, which is ending, and we, we're not sure of if we shall get another funny. But it has been, these are some features that has inspired me to say that we start talking about TB and disability. Okay. So, uh, what are some of the unique challenges which people with the double burden of disability and TB face? Can you share some of the challenges? One of the challenges is the communication. For example, people who have hearing impairment, they haven't accessed information on generally what is TB, what is the causes, and how do we prevent them. The same applies that the TB specialists in the hospitals don't know how to communicate this message in terms of the drug management and others. So that is a very big challenge. The second challenge is that um, people who acquire essentially disability like hearing, they fail to cope up because it's old. There's no intervention that is in place to help them cope up with the new disability that is acquired. And then now he gets double stigma that he has a disability. And then also people think that much as he had TB, TB hasn't stopped. So that is a big challenge to them. Three, 
is that where do they access these drugs? Most of us here in Uganda, we go to health center for or to the main hospital. But what we have discovered is that the distance to the health centers is long. So I cannot ride my wheelchair for a longer distance. I cannot wheel up to that without a helper, but it's very expensive. And there is no uh, campaign or support that leads to go house to house to give these drugs and administer them. So that is another big challenge. The other challenge is that people, for example, who have epilepsy and you get TB, you're already on your drugs, and then you're also adding on another drug, and then you also have HIV. So you look at that, that series of all the medication that you have to take, but who is there to listen to this person who has epilepsy, who has HIV and has TB, to understand the situation this human being is going through? That is another big challenge. Then the other challenge is that who knows us that we also are affected? I think there's no data uh, on disability and TB. There's no clear intervention on disability and TB, and that affects um, persons with disability because the government cannot plan for them. Even the donor community cannot really think that that is an issue that needs to address. So these are the unique challenges that we cannot talk about. Second, uh, lastly, is the role of the role models. People who have uh, acquired uh, disability due to TB need them to come out and then give testimony to the rest of the world so that they inspire. That is a gap that is missing as well. But we also miss the gap of technical management and technical know-how and the research, basically. So in the area of TB and disability. So these are the unique issues that are affecting persons with disability. So you think there needs to be more coordination uh, and cooperation between organizations who are working on disability and those who are working for TB, HIV control, because probably they are working in silos and uh, organizations who work with the with disability and people with disability, there needs to be more coordination with them, is it? I totally agree with you 100%. And uh, because of that, as Madifa have developed 21 recommendations that can bring the synergy together, uh, uh, partners that are working in TB and partners working in disability and others, so, so that we can have one voice and to be able to address these issues that are affecting persons with disability. I totally agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would you suggest, what is the way forward to really bring these people into the general discourse and as even Agenda 2030 says, leave no one behind and uh, we have to work uh, for the betterment of everyone. So what are your suggestions for the way forward? I will recommend five suggestions. The first suggestion is to have a special funding to address right from a stop TB and then all ages that are working in the area of TB and funding to have a special um, funding for TB and disability all over the world. So the second recommendation is the networking and collaboration in research, project implementation, uh, on TB and disability among all the partners. There are people that have had experience quite long and we need them on board. The third recommendation is that all the guidelines that are looking at, for example, the global TB and malaria, uh, we need to have a line that tells these governments that they should make sure that in one of the indicators to address is disability. We want to see how it is addressed in the funding. So if it is there and there is that line, then we shall be assured that disability will be tackled in all countries. But now it doesn't surface anywhere and that hinders that. A four, we would recommend to start working with partner organizations of persons with disability so that we address our needs because nothing for us without us, that is really very important. I know what I go through. So if I give my testimony, it's really very important. And the last recommendation is to request for people to take up research in TB and disability so that we talk with evidence, we talk with clear information, 
we, we plan based on statistics and research available. So to me, I'm calling upon everybody that is in the area of health, more especially disability and more especially TB, for that bring on board these five issues. Okay. Uh, anything else you would like to share, uh, Mairo? Anything else which we have missed out? One, I want to thank uh, CNS for really following up and picking up this interest in the media. We were in Netherlands last year in the conference and they picked it up and they're still following it up. And I'm happy that they're also linking us to other partners that are working in disability and uh, TB in India. I think this is really, we need the media to come up and start talking about this. This is really very important. We want also to thank TAG the AIDS treatment group for really supporting up this initiative. And uh, our project, much as it was a one-off project, but it has been really very useful. And they've continued giving us technical advice on where to go about. Okay. So it's very important. But I also okay. like to encourage more persons with ability to buy in this idea. This is an advocacy campaign, which we started last year, and I'm happy that it's still strong enough and it's going on. So any partner that is working on uh, TB, um, please, including the union. The union should, I presented my paper to the union and it To you, Mairo, for the very inspiring work you are doing. And Thank you. Friends, you were listening to Michael Mairo, who is representative for Dance Handicap Forbund from Uganda and leads the Masaka Association of Persons with Disabilities Living with HIV and AIDS. In this episode of NTB Dialogues, which is a special CNS series, presenting insightful and thought-provoking interviews yes. with leaders to accelerate progress towards ending TB. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next episode. And thank you, Michael, once again. Mm -hmm.